Today I'm going to introduce you to a tool called the Inference Model. Let me start by giving you a little bit of context. The Inference Model is a really useful tool to help you think about the ways in which recommendations can become implemented. It's all very well to go and do a lot of analysis, come up with some creative and innovative solutions, but unless you can actually implement them, nothing's going to actually change. This tool really helps you to think about ways in which people's mindsets and behaviours can be moved. This tool is brought to you by 2020 Delivery Academy and it's part of a course. It's a whole range of different tools. If you want to have a look on our channel, you can find out more. It's based on a true story and it's a universal tool that's used not only in the public sector but also in the private sector. And we'll give you a chance at the end to try out this tool for yourself. So that's the context. Let me introduce you quickly to the case. Meet Harold, our patient. Harold's been passing blood. And as a result of that, he's been put on the hematuria pathway. This pathway is really important because it can tell you whether or not you have cancer. So obviously getting a really quick diagnosis is really important here. Now unfortunately, um, in Harold's case, it took 61 days to get him a diagnosis. Angela, the new patient experience manager at the hospital, has been drafted in to do something about this and she's been working with uh, Dr Johnson on working out ways to improve the situation for patients. And they've come up with a whole set of recommendations uh, that they can improve the time it takes to get a diagnosis and make things much more comfortable and much better experience for patients like Harold. However, they've started to come up against a number of problems. First is that actually it's not just those two that need to make changes in their daily lives. They need to get all of the other Dr. Johnsons and the whole of the rest of the organisation to make changes. Otherwise, nothing will really improve. It isn't just the Dr. Johnsons, it's also the nurses, and also the managers like Angela, and also all of the other patients. So it's not just about affecting the behaviour of one or two people, they need to get a whole range of different people to change in order for anything to really improve. The inference model is a really useful model for thinking about ways in which change can be encouraged. It's essentially four levers that are designed to shift mindsets and behaviours. These are role modelling fostering understanding and conviction, developing talent and skills, and reinforcing with formal mechanisms. I'll change my behaviour if I see superiors, peers and subordinates behaving in the new way. If I know what's expected of me, I agree with it and it's meaningful. If I have the skills and competencies to behave in the new way, and if the structures, processes and systems reinforce the change of behaviour that I'm being asked to make. Let's start with role modelling. If you don't have role modelling, what tends to happen is at this slow pace. You can overcome this by thinking about leadership actions, by looking at opinion shapers, and about the interactions between different members of staff. What they did in Harold's case was to find those key clinical staff whose behaviour was likely to be mimicked by other members of staff. Second thing is fostering understanding and conviction. If you don't explain to people why they need to do something, they're going to be confused and that's going to impact on the amount that they're willing to change their behaviour. I know if I'm told to do something, I'm sure it's the same with you, you're going to want to know why you do it before you go out of your way to change to a new way of working. So the way to think about this is to think about the story development. So what's the history of the problem? What are the values? What's the strategy? What's the case for change? And also about the story delivery. So who are you telling it to? You're telling it the whole organisation, to different employees, different functions? So in Harold's case, they made sure that for each of the managers, each of the doctors and each of the nurses, they told the story of Harold as an example. They said, actually, we need to make all these changes to our own behaviour because it can really make a difference to patients here. The third part is reinforcing with formal mechanisms. If you don't do this, then you end up with false starts. Something might start for a little while, there'll be initial enthusiasm, but actually over time, unless it's reinforced by the way that things work, then it's only going to get so far. So you can think about it in a number of different ways. So think about the way that the organisational structure supports or doesn't support the new behaviours, about targets and metrics, management processes, business processes, rewards, recognition and consequences, and information systems too. So in Harold's case, they did two things. The first one was very simple. They simply measured what they were doing. So they measured the time until diagnosis. And then as they started making changes, they could show over time that things had improved. And also they made sure that the rewards and reporting systems were reflected in the organisation. 
The last part is developing talent and skills. If you don't give people the new skills and capabilities to act in the way that you're asking them to do, it's going to inevitably lead to anxiety. But there are ways that you can manage this. So you can look at your talent management. So have you hired the right people with the right skills to undertake the, the new behaviour? You can also think about learning. So could you give people on-the-job training? Could you send them off to a training course? Could you send them an informational leaflet? In Harold's case, what they did is they made a short online video and they posted it so that all the staff could understand why this was important for patients and also what they needed to change in order to improve things. And that's the inference model. It's a fairly simple tool for helping you to think about all of the components that you need to ensure that people's mindsets and behaviours shift. Let's move on to a little exercise now. So uh, in a moment I'm going to ask you to pause this video. I want you to think about an example from your organisation, an example of where either change has happened or a change has been attempted to be implemented and hasn't gone so well. And what I want you to think about is the things that uh, went well as part of that change programme and things that didn't go so well. And using the inference model, think about which levers could have been pulled to help shift those mindsets and behaviours. Hit pause on the video now and use whatever you feel comfortable with, pen, paper, PowerPoint, whatever helps you really. And just have a go at doing this example for yourself. And that's the end of the lesson. Uh, thanks very much for listening. We'd really appreciate your feedback so that we can help improve these videos for our viewers. So if you could please just leave a quick comment below, that would be very much appreciated. Thanks for watching.